Oh, check this out. Yeah. That's a monarch. Yeah. Well, it's a monarch caterpillar. Right. That and this is, this is common milkweed. Right, right. That's a monarch uh, butterfly uh, caterpillar. And this is common milkweed. Now, common milkweed uh, blooms earlier in the year, like in June, very fragrant. There's none blooming now, unfortunately. However, the caterpillars, monarch caterpillars feed 100% uh, on, on milkweed plants. Common milkweed, I think even more so than the swamp milk group. Uh, swamp milkweed around here that we saw uh, earlier. Now, I love this this bloom on this plant, but there is something we should mention about this this particular species, right? Right, right. This is an invasive species. It's, it's considered a noxious weed in, in many states, Pennsylvania, one of them. Uh, this is called purple loosestrife. has a really nice bloom. Uh, it grows in, in wetlands. So in, in a rare wetlands where hand management is not practical, uh, this plant can absolutely you know, take over an area. Where we're standing right here is an intermittent pond. So when we have a lot of rainfall, uh, this is actually filled with water. Hence, that's why we have the purple loosestrife here. Now, this loosestrife, uh, shortly I will, I will you know, cut the flowers um, you know, so to prevent it from spreading. But this is an invasive species that looks nice but if you don't manage it, it will absolutely take over uh, a wet area. So it does pay to research the species. Sure, sure. If you, yeah, if, if you're trying to establish, establish or maintain native species, especially uh, rare species, uh, then then you have to know what you're uh, up against. Know your natives. Know your natives. Yes. So why don't you explain to the audience uh, a little bit about the correlation between a good riparian buffer and drainage and erosion? Okay, uh, having a riparian buffer is pretty essential for both water quality um, and to prevent uh, further stream bank erosion. Um, what, you, what you want to prevent is, is land use up to uh, the water's edge. Um, by having a buffer in place, which consists of native, native plants and shrubs uh, and trees, what you do is you prevent uh, stream bank erosion when, when storms come through. Uh, it aids in flood control for properties uh, and or land uh, downstream. Uh, it also enhances water quality. If you have a, if you have a 100 foot uh, buffer along a, a stream, um, all, all the potential uh, bad elements that are in the ground uh, will, get, will get filtered out by the time the groundwater it's the stream. So what kind of habitat changes have you witnessed since we moved here? When we moved here about five and a half or six years ago, uh, the, uh, the land was pastured up to the, up to, uh, the creeks and or intensively grazed and, and mowed. So the diversity of, of insect and butterfly species has increased you know, exponentially. Um, this area is relatively fragmented, so large, you know, large species of animals are, you know, are sort of limited. But it is good habitat for deer. Uh, we have uh, woodcocks that, that nest in here and pass through here uh, on an annual basis, which is a good species, uh, bird migratory bird species to have around. Uh, we have a lot of wood tortoises, uh, box turtles. Um, so it's a much more diverse kind of environment. Um, it's good cover for for minks, and I do see quite a few mink. Um, not as many muskrats as we'd like to see that we used to have, but but there's you know quite a quite a diversity and increase in in in, uh, in the species and a good here. a good balanced ecosystem. Right, it's much more balanced ecosystem versus uh, uh, a a mode more or less monoculture. Thanks, Dave. So we're doing everything we can to maintain and improve our riparian buffers along our two creeks. For more information on how you can do the same, check out the NRCS website or the Fish and Wildlife website or the DCNR website. Thanks.